you can start now. Hello, everyone. I am Laura Stancho from Romania, can, uh, Deputy Country Director of IIU. And I wish, first of all, to thank International, International Internship University for this wonderful opportunity of being here today. A few words about IIU. International Internship University is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and it is committed to providing better virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. Today's topic uh, will be related to EQ versus IQ. And um, first of all, I would like uh, all of you to think about the importance of um, IQ, of being intelligent. How important is it uh, to have uh, a great IQ to be like one of uh, the um, people like Einstein who proved to the world that their intelligence was above uh, normal. And how important is it to have emotional intelligence? What is the difference between these two? Which is um, uh, the thing that most helps you in life. So, EQ versus IQ. Um, are my slides moving? Could you please confirm? Yes. All right. So once more, IQ versus EQ. All of us want to have um, intelligent children, intelligent students. I am a teacher and for me, this is one of the things that I um, think about when I um, try to have to visualize a uh, class. Students which are intelligent, students which want to learn, um, students who want to uh, improve, always try to be better at the things that they are doing. So what is, what does it mean to be intelligent? Just a second. The word intelligence comes from the Latin word intelligere, which means to understand. And thus it describes a person's high or especially quick cognitive capacity. IQ, which is short for intelligence quotient, is a measure of a person's reason reasoning ability. The IQ is supposed to determine how well someone can use information and logic to answer questions or make predictions. So when we speak about IQ, it mostly refers to our problem solving abilities. There are many IQ tests which are meant to assess this, to assess a person's level of um, 
problem solving by measuring short and long term memory. This also measure how well people can solve puzzles and remember information that they've heard and how quickly. The words first mental test was created in 1890 and it consisted of tests measuring the speed and accuracy of perception. It soon turned out, however, that such tests cannot predict academic achievement. Therefore, they are probably imperfect measures of anything we would call intelligence. Technical glitches, but that's all right. The first modern day IQ test was created by the French psychologist Alfred Binet in 1905 in order to be able to identify children who cannot help, who, who cannot keep up with their peers in the educational system that had recently been made compuls compulsory for all. Binet believed that IQ could be increased by education. IQ is, um, is calculated by, uh, by, by taking the mental age and physical age. It was coined in 1912 by the psychologist William Stern in relationship to the, ter to the German term intelligence quotient. At that time, IQ was represented as a ratio of mental age to chronological age times 100. So uh, if uh, an individual of 10 years of age had a mental age of 10, their IQ would be 100. However, if their mental age was greater than their chronological age, for example, uh, 12 rather than 10, their IQ would be 120. However, um, if their mental age was greater than their chronological age, their IQ would be 120, for example, for a child um, 12 rather than two. Similarly, if their mental age was lower than their chronological age, their IQ would be lower than 100. There are ways to improve our intelligence. And some of them are to seek novelty, to always seek new things in our lives. And that's why teachers um, emphasize a lot the need for lifelong learning, the need to always learn. In our lives, we need to seek out new activities, new experiences and information. For example, learn a musical instrument, take an art class, learn a foreign language, go to a museum, learn a subject that you have never uh, tried learning before. Because when you expose yourself to new things, you create neural connections. So connections between the neurons in the brain that build on each other and create an optimal environment for learning. And this helps your brain stay young. Always challenge yourself because when we are become too efficient, we stop uh, growing in a cognitive way. Efficiency hinders cognitive growth. As soon as you start to become proficient in a subject or activity, you have to move on to the next one because your brain trains itself, becomes accustomed to what uh, you have to do. And uh, it's, um, it stops uh, evolving in that certain subject. Always be challenged by what you are doing. The, this keeps your brain constantly making new neural connections, creating an optimal environment for learning. Try to think creatively. Engage both your right and left hemispheres, both sides of the brain. 
think across a wide range of subjects, make connections between remote ideas, alternate between conventional and unconventional thinking, and look always look for solutions which aren't that easy to find. Do things the hard way. Your brain needs exercise just like your body. And technology can weaken your cognitive abilities if you rely on it too much. Use your memory to get to a place instead of your GPS. Use your spelling skills instead of autocorrect. Do the math in your head instead of reaching for the calculator. So always challenge your brain. And network. Networking, being in society always helps. Exposing yourself to a variety of people gives you opportunities to see problems from a new perspective or offer insights in ways that you haven't thought of before. This helps you to think in new and different ways. So what is more important, to be intelligent or to be emotionally intelligent, to have emotional intelligence? Because IQ, being intelligent means to, intelligent means to have high concentration, intense focus, to have a better comprehension of things, to have analytical skills and an excellent memory. And to be emotional intelligence means to have self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, and social skills. Only uh, one of these is not enough. You need both of them in order to achieve success. Emotional intelligence is the ability to sense, to understand and effectively apply the power of emotions in order to facilitate higher levels of productivity, communication, and collaboration. Emotional intelligence, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ, is the ability to understand, to use and manage your own emotions in positive ways in order to relieve stress, to communicate e effectively, to empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. It is the ability to identify our own emotions and emotions of others, to self-motivate ourselves and to know how to monitor our emotions and those of the people around us. If we only use our intelligence and we don't know how to uh, communicate the things we know in a order in such a way that uh, it um, can reach other people, it, we won't have the same impact. Um, and we need to know how to manage our own emotions and how to manage the emotions um, of others. So internally and externally. And this has to do with self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, and being empathic trying to feel what others are feeling and responding to those emotions. And this always helps us to increase our social skills. Emotional intelligence helps you build stronger relationships. It helps you to succeed at school and work. And it helps you to achieve your career and personal goals. It can also help you to connect with your feelings, to turn your intentions into action and make informed decisions about what matters most to you. IQ is basically a number representing a person's reasoning ability, while EQ is the ability to perceive, to evaluate and control emotions. It means that IQ means that we involve the knowledge and skills that we acquire throughout life and our ability to reason, to solve problems, and understand abstract information. While EQ means, through its four components, perceiving emotions, reasoning with emotions, understanding and managing emotions, that we know how to relate to the others around us. IQ deals with uh, analytic thought, while EQ is more into holistic thought.
We need logic, memory, language, hyperactivity, and con concentration and comprehension. And when we speak about emotional intelligence, we speak about intuition, empathy, things related to art and music, creativity, awareness, and motivation. Emotional intelligence is a complex process involving the ability to perceive, understand, control, and evaluate emotions. People with high emotional intelligence can recognize their own emotions and those of others, use emotional information to guide thinking and behavior, to discern between different feelings and label them appropriately, and adjust emotions to adapt to environments. It is the best predictor of success in life because when we know how to communicate the things we know or the things we feel, we can create bridges between people. It is related to work performance because we are a lot more efficient when we know how to send the right message, how to adjust our message to the people who are reading or listening to it. And it is also related to effective leadership. As leaders, people need to know how to motivate others, how to guide them and lead them towards success. And this can only be done with a high degree of emotional intelligence. People with high emotional intelligence accept the self as they are and accept others. They can communicate in an assertive way. They can display empathy towards uh, the people around them. While people with low emotional intelligence do not accept the self and others are always criticizing, they use passive or aggressive communication and they lack empathy. This is why emotional intelligence is essential in order to survive, to survive in <clears throat> uh, today's society. We need to communicate with each other. We need to share. Um, and we also need to be aware of what we are feeling and what others are feeling in order to have a successful communication. Emotional intelligence affects our lives in many ways, on an intrapersonal and interpersonal level. It deals with self-awareness, recognizing our own um, emotions, our skills, our abilities, and our weaknesses. And also with social awareness, seeing the same things in others, trying to read what others uh, are like in order to be able to communicate more effectively. It deals with behaviors, self-management, so the way we regulate our emotions, the way we uh, respond to situations, and of course, relationship management, the way we manage our emotions and um, everything else when it comes to communicating with uh, the others. At work, it deals with self-performance and um, with other people's performance. <clears throat> Self-management is the ability to control um, impulsive feelings and behaviors, manage your emotions in healthy ways, take initiative, follow through on commitments and adapt to changing circumstances. Self-awareness means recognizing your own emotions and how they affect your thoughts and behavior. You know your strengths and weaknesses and have self-confidence. It is always important to have self-awareness because when a um, difficult situation occurs, um, 
we can um, we can find ways of adapting of better adapting to it if we are if we have um, emotional intelligence we can become less <clears throat> um, we can um, we can become less affected by the things around us uh, if we know how to respond to certain situations, how to adapt our um, emotions, and how to look at the situation in an objective way. Um, if, we, if we are able to do this, if we can um, take a bit of a distance, and analyze uh, all the situations that we are going through instead of only reacting uh, to that certain situation. It will help us reach the best decision because we can do this with, um, with an open heart and an open mind. Social awareness means that people have empathy understanding the emotions, the needs and concerns of other people, picking up on emotional cues, feeling comfortable socially and recognizing the power dynamics in a group or organization. This is extremely helpful when it comes to a workplace or a classroom full of students. Um, the teacher has to recognize the signals that the students um, give during classes, um, making sure that they can, that they have understood the lesson, that they have um, understood what is being taught. Uh, if they have other concerns, if they have other problems, the teacher should be able to feel that and adapt the teaching process in order to include all the students and uh, to make them understand in their own way, using the right tools, the right explanations in order to reach out to those students who maybe are having a bad day or it is a bit more difficult for them to grasp the things that uh, are being taught. Relationship management means you know how to develop and maintain good relationships, how to communicate clearly, how to inspire and influence others, how to work well in a team, and how to manage conflict. As I've mentioned before, um, when a conflict arises, it is better to um, distance ourselves, to take a, a break from our strongest emotions and try to analyze the things that are happening. And if we have uh, emotional intelligence, we can always take the best decision by doing this. So intelligence, uh, in the general sense is the ability to learn new concepts and apply your knowledge in order to solve, solve problems. While emotional intelligence is similar, it is the ability to learn about yourself and apply that wisdom to the world around. This is a quote that I really like. Emotional intelligence, more than any other factor, more than IQ or expertise, accounts for 85% to 90% of success at work. IQ is a threshold competence. You need it, but it doesn't make you a star. Emotional intelligence can. Emotional intelligence is indeed very important. It is essential. It creates the bonds and the links we need with the world and with ourselves in order to be successful and in order to make ourselves always understood. 
there are ways to improve our emotional intelligence. We can do this uh, through assertive communication because emotionally intelligent people know how to communicate their opinions and needs in a direct way while still respecting others. So we need to educate ourselves in order to understand that all people need to be respected and all need to be treated in a certain way. If we adapt our speech to, um, to the person we are talking to, our words will become a lot more efficient. Respond instead of reacting to conflict. The emotionally intelligent people know how to stay calm during stressful situations. They don't make impulsive decisions that can lead to even bigger problems. So instead of acting on impulse, we should try to always analyze the situations we are in and try to take um, steps in order to defuse conflict. Active listening skills. In conversations, emotionally intelligent people listen for clarity instead of just waiting for their turn to speak. They make sure they understand what is being said before responding. They also pay attention to the non-verbal details of a conversation, which prevents misunderstanding, allows the listener to respond properly, and shows respect for the person they are speaking to. So we should always pay attention to the words, but also to body language, to the expression of the person who we are talking to, and to other nonverbal details which might appear and might give us a clue about the things which are being said. Always be motivated. Emotionally intelligent people are self-motivated and their attitude motivates others. They set goals and they are resilient in the face of challenges. We need to practice ways to maintain a positive attitude. And this can be done by engaging in prayer or meditation during the day or keeping positive messages nearby. There are so many ways in which we can cultivate a positive attitude. Yes, a nice message that we can send ourselves uh, by simply telling us that everything is going to be all right, that we have done something good or that something good is going to be uh, accomplished by us soon. This really uh, boosts our self-confidence and it motivates us to um, always um, be ready to face any challenge. Um, we need to find things which uh, keep us going, either a hobby or something that we really like. And this <clears throat> helps us have a positive attitude towards life. Practicing self-awareness is also helpful. Emotionally intelligent people are self-aware and intuitive. They are aware of their own emotions and how they can affect those around them. They also pick up on others' emotions and body language and use that information to enhance their communication skills. We need to empathize with others. This really opens up our horizon, makes us better people. When we are kinder to others, uh, we make the world a better place and we really develop our emotional intelligence. We become more approachable, more sociable and more skilled at creating bonds with those around us. And now, if I may um, present to my point of view as a teacher, so can emotional intelligence make me a better teacher? Do teachers benefit from um, being emotionally intelligent? And I would like to begin this with uh, a couple of quotes that really capture the meaning of what I am um, trying to uh, 
say. <clears throat> Teachers can connect with learners beyond transmission of ideas and facts, thereby transforming the experience. Not using emotional intelligence diminishes the value of subject knowledge and learning and teaching methods. Teaching preparation programs need to support teacher candidates by scaffolding the reflective abilities surrounding emotional intelligence and by providing sufficient time within the curriculum to improve, infuse this process. So teachers need a good subject knowledge, a good um, a lot of information about the subject they are teaching. They need to know the teaching methods and how to better prepare their students for exams. But they also need emotional intelligence in order to better reach their students because this is the purpose of education, not only acquiring information, but uh, delivering that information in a way that it will be remembered by the students. Teachers can create an effective learning classroom by their sheer will and motivation to make their students more aware in various subject and skills. Highly emotional intelligent teachers tend to motivate their students better and understand their students' behavioral and psychological well-being. They can also be more sensitive towards their students' disruptive behaviors, academic performance, and relationship management. They can handle and deal with various issues children are facing in a better way. Self-regulation is an important aspect of emotional intelligence. Thus, a more self-aware teacher can manage her children more successfully. Today, Children too have many age-related issues at home or at school. Thus, it is also important for the child to show confidence in the teacher. A good and emotionally intelligent teacher will not only be self-aware, but will also show empathy towards children, parents, and peers. Today, what children need is someone who understands their feelings and emotions guides them and does not judge them in any way. Empathy thus shown by the teacher makes a positive learning environment. We need to always keep in mind um, that we are talking to you know, little people. Our students are people who have their own emotions, who are responding to the things around them not only knowledge, but they also come with their own background of emotions and of um, their own reality. We need to adjust, to adapt in order to reach them and in order to make them want to learn and to make them feel accepted in our learning environment, in our classrooms. For academic excellence, Teachers need to understand the difference between cognitive and emotional intelligence, but they must focus on emotional literacy of their students. Emotionally intelligent teachers show care for the students, create an emotional climate in the classroom that develops the student's learning environment and helps the teachers to become more effective in order to ensure academic achievement. It has been seen that a teacher's emotional intelligence affects their comfort um, level, self-efficacy, uh, job satisfaction level, and enhances social relationships with students. As a result, emotional intelligence directly affects the learning process. Working on classroom emotions has become vital nowadays for students. Uh, for an emotional positive growth or for positive academic achievement. It is hoped that the successful teachers have high 
level of emotional competencies. Emotional intelligence forecasts positive and successful results in all fields of life and consequently in dominance all fields of education. It dominates all fields of education. Teachers need to be trained in emotional intelligence in order to manage their own emotions for helping students. And there are many activities which teachers can use in order to develop um, the student's emotional intelligence and in order to make the students more communicative, more um, aware of um, their feelings and their learning abilities. There are certain emotional intelligence games which help develop empathy through illustrations of social situations that show complex emotions. So what we could do as educators is place our students in a certain uh, situation where they have to um, imagine responding to different um, situations. When they do this, they become more empathic. They um, understand that uh, not all people are the same and um, they understand how to relate and how to communicate better with, better with others. There are problem solving games. Uh, and for these, they need to prepare by um, taking deep breath or think, thinking of plans and trying them out. When we uh, present different um, problem solving tasks to the students, uh, they try to um, place themselves in those particular situations. And this helps them develop both their intelligence and their emotional intelligence. Uh, for example, when um, we give them the tasks of uh, um, trying to think as a person from history or as uh, somebody they uh, really admire. What would you do in this situation? Then uh, it really um, helps them to, to relate to that person and to um, discover that there are so many situations uh, in the world that they are not uh, um, aware of. And role play is the best way of recognizing feelings and emotions and how they are uh, shown. Role play and theater in general helps the students to become somebody else for a short period of time and to experience uh, another person's um, emotions, feelings, and actions. Um, many times the roles that the students have to play are completely opposite to uh, what they are like in reality. And this is a big challenge for them, but it, this also helps them <coughs> to understand, to place uh, themselves in um, another person's shoes. Let's see how another person would react to this, how another person thinks. Um, always uh, try to use role play and theater in order to force students to become somebody else, even if it is for a short period of time. Recognizing somebody else's reality and somebody else's way of thinking helps them become more empathic, more aware of the feelings of others. Labeling emotions is a great way of uh, making them open their hearts um, and to recognize when another person is um, experiencing uh, something, a difficult situation, for example. A great way for uh, students to express their emotion is through 
art through something different other than words because some of our students are shy they it is very difficult for them to place themselves uh, in the position of uh, um, giving uh, spoken form to their feelings to put their feelings into words and that's why sometimes uh, it is more it is it is a lot easier for them to do this through art through painting through uh, drawing or even poetry there are many ways um, of um, turning our feelings into something that can be seen or perceived in another way um, other than speaking about the feelings. And this is uh, what we need to encourage, especially those students who really need to be heard but uh, are not strong enough to have a voice yet. Understanding different cultures is part of the uh, emotional intelligence awareness. If uh, students are exposed to different cultures, if they speak, if they communicate with uh, students from all around the world and uh, witness their reality, their way of um, um, thinking, it really opens up their horizons and their uh, culture regarding other um, people from this wide world. We need to, uh, exp we need to make them um, um, as much as possible, we need to create uh, this, uh, these connections for them. Um, because it really um, makes them a lot more uh, empathic to know that there are people who have another way of life, who are from uh, places where realities are different. We need to teach them how to accept uh, all the uh, all these realities, all these. Uh, things that happen around them. And we need to encourage our students to be good listeners. When we listen, um, we absorb information. And um, we need to um, do this with an open heart and an open mind. We need to teach our students to congratulate and appreciate the people around them. And probably this is one of the most important things that we need to do. Uh, teach them how to see the good in others, how to um, be able to appreciate the good parts in themselves and uh, in those around them. When we do this, we... Um, it really connects us to the others. So in order to be emotion, to have emotional intelligence, we need to be uh, empathic. So to feel um, what others are feeling, to be able to read their feelings and to respond in an adequate way you need motivation, motivation for yourself, but also to motivate others to be a good leader, to be open-minded, to have an open mind means to be able to accept all the things that are happening and all the um, different uh, sides of reality. We need to be tolerant, to be inspiring for others, but also to be our own inspiration in order to uh, continue on our way to success. Always be optimistic because this is what drives us 
always to see the good things in life, reading nonverbal signals. So sometimes a person can say something to us, but uh, it might not be what they are trying to tell us. So always read the words that are not spoken, but the words which show on a person's face or through their gestures. We need awareness to be aware, to be always um, aware of what uh, other people are trying to tell us and never stop learning. Learning is probably um, the most important quality of a person. The ability to always learn new skills, always be able to improve. And I would like to end with a quote. It is very important to understand that emotional intelligence is not the opposite of intelligence. It is not the triumph of heart over head, but it is the unique intersection of both. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here today and to show my uh, views regarding intelligence and emotional intelligence. So always try to keep an open heart and an open mind. Thank you so much.